It's an ever-ready smart Wi-Fi controlled GU10 LED lamp, and you can tell it's very special because it came in a big box, as opposed to this normal, non-intelligent GU10 lamp. And this one came from Poundland in the UK. And then predictably the box is quite a surprise amount of air in it. Hold on, let's just compare look, look, you can actually stuff another lamp in, in the air section. That's just odd. It came from Poundland but didn't cost a pound, unfortunately. So, yeah, lots and lots of packaging. That is ridiculous. It is just a little GU10 lamp. Let's get the packaging out of the way here. Let's, just for comparison, let's stick it into this box and see how it fits. Does it fit in a wee tiny box? Yes, it does. So they could have just put it in a box this size, but not to worry, they didn't. So let's plug it in and see what happens when it's powered up by default without any Wi-Fi connectivity. I shall grab a socket here. A suitable adapter. And we'll stuff it in and just see if it lights up by default when powered up. It gently dimmed up to warm white. Not bad. Actually, I want to see the power rating now. One moment. What the fuck? <laughs> that is very... That is very... Very annoying. Oh, look at me, look at me. I'm wanting somebody to connect to me. What an annoying feature. Not to worry. Uh, right. Uh, let's see what power it takes before it starts going to disco mode. One moment, please. How much power does it take before going into super disco mode? Uh, 4.9 watts. Okay. Right. That took me by surprise. I was expecting it to do that. I thought by default it would uh, wait for something to happen before it started going into the I am the one that is selected mode. Anyway, if we pop the front off, it reveals. Oh, this thing does the, uh, what they claim, 16 million colours. And cold white and warm white. I've already explored to agree. There's the, let's zoom down this. There is the little antenna snaked in there for the Wi-Fi a very interesting chip, because I've actually done a little bit of pre-exploration. We've got uh, eight warm white and eight cold white LEDs, and then we've got four RGB LEDs. So they provide the box ticking RGB. But the main thing is, for if you want super amounts of light, it's going to be cold white, warm white, or both. If you want uh, RGB, it's just going to be four standard LEDs. So it's just token gesture, just, uh, shall we say, atmospheric lighting. Okay. Right, you know what happens now? The circuit board comes out and we explore it. One moment, please. And let's explore quite interesting circuitry, I have to say. A couple of interesting chips, both by Bright Power. This is not a surprise. There is a mystery chip in this module here. The module is tucked down inside. It's a little 3.3 volt regulator. I'm not sure what that is, but it's, it doesn't really matter in this instance. Um, what we really want to know is just its function. So the main supply comes on via a 27 ohm resistor for a fusible resistor and in rush limiting. It's got a uh, filter capacitor here, 150 nano. It's got a little inductor here for filtering. And then there's a bridge rectifier and then a smoothing capacitor, 400 volt smoothing capacitor for that death beam experience, which provides roughly a, a just over 300 volts in the UK uh, or Europe to power which actually it actually goes right out to one of the connectors because the circuit board on the front uh, has a zero volt rail it's got 330 volts say and it's got 14 volts the 14 volts is for the leds uh, the rgb leds the higher voltages for the general illumination leds and it's got this clever clever chip in here notice there's just two links and a six pin connector of which five pins are used this chip is very very interesting i'll show you that in a moment i'll show you the rest of the schematic um so we've got the main supply comes on for this capacitor here and goes out we've also got this section here which is a 12 volt regulator 12 volt buck regulator deriving it directly from the mains but they've cheated they've put a diode in here just to boost that up by just a couple of volts 2.4 volts i think it is and that gives just over 14 volts in the output that's for the red green blue leds then it goes over to this little 3.3 volt module here this one that's slotted through the circuit board and that provides the 3.3 volts for the wi-fi module which is also just slotted through and has five connections 3.3 volt zero volt 
the antenna going out and then clock and data because it's putting out I2C to the uh, the front module. Let me show you the schematic for this. It'd be more interesting. There is a mystery capacitor here. You can chime in on what you think this is for. I'm not sure why it's there. If it's filtering, stability, noise filtering, really not sure. Let's zoom down in this. So the incoming supply comes in here. There's a 27 ohm resistor. There's the filtering capacitor and there's a little inductor with a 5.1k resistor across it to quench resonance, presumably. I'm not really sure why they do that. We've got a bridge wrecked far. We've got the death beam capacitor. The reason I call it a death beam capacitor is because a conspiracist claimed that the reason that there are 400 volt capacitors in streetlight power supplies is to power the 5G death beams. They actually said that. But this uh, death beam capacitor then has the output going with about, say, 330 volts in the UK and Europe. It goes straight out to the LED circuit board. It also goes to this little bright power BP2522X chip. And this is a program, but it's got a select pin that you can either take to its positive or its ground. And it selects either 12 or 24 volts. In this case, it's 12 volts they've selected. But they've nudged that with this Zener diode. And this is a very simple circuit. It's got an inductor, it's got the capacitor here, and uh, it charges the capacitor via the inductor from the mains by just turning it on very briefly. And the inductor, because it's got that magnetic field that has to be built up, it pushes back against that and limits the current flowing in to the capacitor. But then when this turns off and the magnetic field collapses, as it collapses, the polarity changes and it also tops up the capacitor via this diode here. So it's a closed little loop. It's got the flywheel diode. Um, it derives its own supply from the uh, power supply it's created. And there's that extra 2.4 volt zener they've stuck in series of the standard diode that normally goes to that. And that uh, just nudges because this uses the, its supply voltage to also sense the voltage across that capacitor. And by adding that zener, it's nudged that a bit. So they've got their 14 volts, which is needed because there are effectively four... Um, green and blue LEDs in series on the, on the board and it needs a slight allowance for the regulator to drop. That 14.4 volt supply also feeds that little 3.3 volt all-in-one module. I'm guessing that this must take a modest amount of current then if they actually use a, a module like that instead of just a simple regulator. Uh, it has its own 220 microfarad 10 volt capacitor. That uh, 14 volt supply is 100 microfarad 16 volt. And that then powers, the 3.3 volts then powers the Wi-Fi module, and it's interesting to note that it is, the chip in it wants to remove the Energizer label off an ever-ready product. So that's two dead brands. Uh, why don't they just add Duracell, a Duracell sticker in there as well, so they can have all the zombie brand, battery brands at the same time. But I'm guessing it's the same company that owns this, or they come from the same factory. Well, that will happen anyway. But the chip underneath is a BK7231N, and yes, theoretically you could, if you had the knowledge, you could flash it with open source firmware for Wi-Fi control that didn't involve sending your email address and other stuff to this company. And yeah, I, you'll notice I didn't demonstrate this running. Under, I didn't connect it and load apps onto the phone. I just, uh, I'm not into the internet of, of things. I just don't think it's very secure. It's a, a novelty. The 3.3 volt supply also has two pull up resistors, 5.1k to data and clock from the Wi Fi module. That's all it's going out at. Uh, 3.3, 0, uh, antenna, data and clock, just five connections. The data and clock is uh, I2C communication, a very standard two-wire communication system used on circuit boards for communicating between chips. Is that everything? That is everything. So now we go on to this board here with its uh, regulator chip. This is very clever. It's a BP5758 by Bright Power, and it is a five-channel linear regulator. So it takes, it's got a zero volt, which is a pad underneath that. That's so how it manages to fit it in an eight pins. It's actually got nine pins. So the zero volts is the pad underneath, and it's got the five inputs, it's got the um, data and the clock. Now I notice there's, there's eight pins. I'm not sure what the other pin does. I should look at the data sheet for it. Hold on, give us a second. Where is the data sheet for this? Um, oh, so there is a high voltage input. 
I didn't know that. It's got the high voltage input. I wonder if it's going in the... Uh, it's getting its power from that, but I wonder. It seems to be... Right, tell you what, I shall, I shall have to explore. I shall have to add a link to my schematic because it's missing that. Is it coming from the 14 volts or is it coming from the high voltage? Uh, just give me a second here. One moment, please. Test done and resume. It's the 14 volt supply. So they're tapping off the 14 volt supply and they're using that as the, well, what's it called that? It calls it HV. It's not really high voltage. It is designed for run the LEDs off super high voltages, I guess. So it, it, I wonder if it could have gone up to 330 volt rail, but it doesn't really matter. It's going to take a lot of the strain off it if it can use that 14 volt supply. There are five circuits of LEDs connected on this circuit board. There are the warm white and cold white LEDs. There are eight of each. I've just drawn five here. It's worth mentioning that I did probe. It's a bit scribbled here because I did probe and of those eight chips, seven are 12 chip, so 36 volts, and one just to balance the voltage. I think they could have gone all 36 volt chips, but one of them uh, on each colour, warm white and cold white, is a six pin chip for 18 volts. So I worked out roughly 270 volts. So there is a fair amount of dissipation uh, being generated from this chip in here, because if you consider it 60 volt, volts to drop roughly, and if it's running them at 20 milliamps, not sure what it is actually running them at, but uh, that would be 1.2 watts dissipated in this chip uh, into the heat sink. I guess it has thermal regulating, most of the bright power auto sensing chips do. So uh, there's the clock and data come in, and it basically, there's no current sense resistor. All that is done by actually telling the chip via clock and data how much current each channel has to pass. And it will program that internally and uh, then drive that. So across, for this 14 volt supply, we've got one, two, three, four blue, the, roughly three volts each, 12 volts. It'll be dropping two volts roughly to drop, two volts roughly for the green, and probably about four volts for the uh, red. But I calculate more like 60 for the warm white and cold white, which seems excessive. I guess maybe they're just trying to increase the, the width of the voltage range. But that's it. It took a while to reverse engineer. These things normally do. It's quite complex. Um, but the most interesting bit is that bright power BP5758 chip. And it does look like you can reprogram these if you have the know-how. There's not many connections on this. It really is designed to be programmed and then plugged in. So maybe it's pre-programmed. But I'm sure there'll be programming pads available in this for pogo pins so you can actually um, do that yourself if you wish although that does mean pretty much it's a bit destructive the only way to get this out of the housing is to actually cut the pins off the end so it kind of wrecks it that way but some lamps are just more amenable to this than others but there we have it the energizer um, color changing LED lamp, five channels of color, red, green, and blue, eight bit control over red, green, and blue for the full, like their eight million color bit. Uh, what, what did they say that was? Was it eight million colors? Can't remember. Where's the box? I have disposed the box. But anyway, the number of colors they quoted is it 60 million? What is basically 256. Oh, hold on, I can calculate that. Get the kink calculator in 256 times 200, oh, 256 times 256 times 256 equals 16 million colours, yeah. That's the bit they're going for. They do include black as one of those colours. But there we go, quite interesting. It's amazing how it's all been crushed down. It's amazing just how simple this is. It's just a couple of power supplies, uh, the Wi-Fi module, and then power and data going across to this marvellous little bright power chip that does all the rest for controlling the LEDs. That's actually really quite impressive. Very smart for the for the money, quite a lot of technology involved and surprisingly simple in its modular approach.